The Red Cross gets hacked and half a million are affected, $34 million in cryptocurrency is stolen in another hack, and the FBI warns about malicious QR codes. All that coming up now on ThreatWire. Greetings, I am Shannon Morris, and this is ThreatWire for January 25th, 2022. This is your summary of the threats to our security, privacy, and internet freedom. A big thank you to Eric for leveling up on the Alliance, and to Spider and Psy for joining on patreon.com slash ThreatWire. Patrons always get a new perk, especially this month. Now, Alliance members on Patreon will get early access to the show on YouTube, and you keep this show completely ad-free other than talking about Patreon. January is a tough month because a lot of people usually do drop out of Patreon right after the holiday season, so any contribution helps and you get perks, so it's a win-win. We do have some really important hacks to get into this week, so let's go ahead and get into the first news story. According to a news release made by the International Committee of the Red Cross, which is called ICRC for short on Wednesday, a cyber attack targeting the Red Cross Red Crescent data affected over 515,000 vulnerable people, and now they are asking the attackers not to share, sell, leak, or expose the information stolen. So this data stolen includes personal information for more than 515,000 people who use this platform, which is called Restoring Family Links, to find missing persons who have been separated due to state conflicts, migrations, natural disasters, along with people in detention facilities. The data comes from 60 different Red Cross and Red Crescent national societies across the globe, so it spans several different countries. This also affected about two 2,000 login credentials belonging to staff and volunteers. The attackers targeted the servers used to store ICRC data, not this Swiss company that hosted them, which the committee clarified on Friday of last week after incorrect reports. The data exists on this unnamed Swiss company servers, but it was a direct attack on the ICRC data. Now, while this was not a ransomware attack, this did cause the ICRC to shut down the systems that operate the Restoring Family Links program while an investigation was underway. The committee detected the attack last week. According to the ICRC's Director General, this program helps reunite about 12 missing people per day on average, and this cyber attack and ones like it, quote, jeopardize that essential work. Now, we don't know who is behind this attack or why they did it, but hopefully they will do the right thing and not put vulnerable people in harm's way. The ICRC is open to communicating with the attackers confidentially. The world's third largest cryptocurrency trading platform was hit with a cyber attack last week that compromised 483 customer accounts, and it led to about $34 million in crypto to be withdrawn. Crypto.com was targeted, and US $33.8 million in dollars was stolen, though the CEO stated in multiple interviews that customer funds are not at risk. Now, the hack caused about $15 million in Ethereum, $18.6 million Bitcoin, and $66,000 in miscellaneous cryptocurrency to be stolen from the platform. The attack was detected on January 17th, at which time Crypto.com suspended withdrawals for about 14 hours. Two-factor authentication tokens were also revoked, so users had to re-sign in and set up new 2FA tokens for access. Now, while this crypto was stolen via unauthorized withdrawals, the platform fully reimbursed affected users. Transactions resumed on January 18th. According to a Crypto.com post, their risk monitoring systems detected the attack and they saw transactions being approved without 2FA authentication, meaning that the 2FA was being bypassed by the attackers. The company migrated to a completely new 2FA infrastructure in response. They also added that the company will be moving away from 2FA and moving to true multi-factor authentication for end-user security, and they will also be beefing up security with this thing called Account Protection Program, which will offer better security for funds within the app and within the exchange. Now, APP would also restore funds up to $200 $50,000 in the event of unauthorized access. 
A lot of technical information regarding this attack has not been shared with the public. So for example, who was behind this attack? We don't know. How were they able to bypass 2FA restrictions for withdrawals? We also don't know the answer to that. What protocol was being used to implement 2FA and how does the new infrastructure fix these problems? I have a lot of questions. Hopefully crypto.com will share some of these answers and information with their customers to ease some of the concerns shared via social media. Real quick, I want to say a big shout out to my Hush Puppy Perk Level patrons for sharing their fur baby photos and for the support. My Patreon exclusive live video hangout happened last week and you can always access those each month if you join any time before that happens. Let's go ahead and finish out today's episode with my Patreon pick for a top story originally shared by my patron who goes by the name, the one who knocks their head on every blooming door lintol. Let's go ahead and chat about QR codes. Now, now the FBI wants you to know that QR codes are bad and they are very scary. You should never touch them. Don't take pictures of QR codes ever. Okay, not entirely, but cyber criminals are using QR codes to steal money from victims, and the FBI released a statement warning folks about this. QR codes are those little squares made out of a bunch of pixels that can be recognized by a smartphone camera app. Restaurants have been using these for the past two years to direct customers to online menus due to the pandemic, and they are often used in advertising or as quick links. Now, this is not a new problem, but it has become a popular threat vector so the FBI was prompted to warn individuals about its use. QR codes are not bad in essence, but if they are tampered with, they could be used for malicious purposes. And in this case, the codes are being used by attackers to redirect users to malicious sites, which prompt them to input any kind of login and financial information, which would allow the attacker to potentially steal funds from victim accounts. These codes can also contain malware, allowing the attacker to gain access to the victim's device as well. So the FBI tells folks to proceed with caution. Whenever you are scanning a QR code that should simply take you to a checkout portal or an online menu, check the URL to make sure that it looks authentic and it's spelled correctly. If a site asks you for login information after loading from a scanned QR code, practice caution. Do not download apps from a QR code. Go directly to the Google Play Store or the Apple App Store instead. If you get an email saying a payment failed and to scan a QR code to try payment again, try calling the company to verify and just make sure that you are using a phone number found through a trusted site, not the email in question. For example, I use Google Maps to find business phone numbers all the time. Use your phone's built-in camera app to scan QR codes instead of some kind of third party app. Of course, if you use an older smartphone, your camera app may not recognize QR codes. And if you need to make a payment to somebody, go to their website address directly, bypassing the QR code entirely. Scammers may use QR codes in emails crafted to steal data instead of using clickable links because these codes make it easier for them to bypass email filters. In the real world, don't scan random QR codes that you find in the wild Wild. And if you see a QR code taped onto a menu or a sign or printed on a sticker and placed somewhere, don't scan it. All of this falls under the rule of using good security hygiene, but it should be used as a good reminder of how this digital code can be used maliciously in the real world as well. Hey, do you want to see more tech videos from me every single week? Check out my YouTube channel. It's youtube.com slash Shannon Morse for everything from tech reviews all the way over to security tutorials. And with that, do not forget to like and subscribe to Hack5 as well. We are on our way to a million subscribers. Will it happen this year? Maybe next year. I don't know. We'll see. I'm Shannon Morse and I'll see you on the internet.